What's up, subs? Jake here. Welcome back for another Diablo 3 guide, I guess. Or this is going to be like a tips video. These are things that I think that every Diablo 3 player needs to know. Might be more beneficial to newer players, but if you're a veteran, you might not know some of this stuff. But I just want to make this video share. Hopefully, you get some value out of this. And if you do, let me know in the comments. All right, guys. So this first trick is going to be centered around gear, legendaries to be um, exact. The way this works, and this only works in GRs, is, and it sounds crazy, but if you are not in the GR when the Rift Guardian dies, then you will get more legendaries than the person who actually, or the people who are actually killing the Rift Guardian, whatever, right? And you can test this yourself. It works. It doesn't work in normal Rifts, right? So what I have is I have a GR open right now. I got two, play, two guys in game, you know, and I'm going to go into this Rift, and I'm going to kill... The rift guardian and then we're going to compare and like you it sometimes it's close right sometimes it's like maybe four or like like five and three but sometimes it's as great as like you know six for one person or nine for the other so my little broski right here he's gonna just stay here we're gonna go we're gonna kill the rift guardian and then we're just gonna compare gear drops this is a trick that i've used for loot sharing or if i'm just like power leveling people then i'll just sit there and you know let them stay in town and then you know they get more gear so let's see i've got what four five so i got five from this so now what i'm going to do is let me switch my screen over to the other account here we're just going to go down here and we're going to see what he gets look at this absolutely ridiculous i don't even have to go back to town to even show you this this is what he got and he's not even he wasn't even in the rift when the rift guardian died so you have that guy which he got what four eight nine he got nine and then uh i got what, five right and this works it seriously works and it's definitely worth you know if you're trying to power level any of your characters like loot sharing yourself if you have multiple accounts you know i guess a good application for this would be you know have multiple accounts all with the same class keep three of them let's say you have four people in game you have three of them in town, one's running the GR, and then at the end of the GR, everybody just goes and grabs gear. You're going to get a lot more gear. Or if you're trying to power level a friend, gear them up. L you know, when you get to the Rift Guardian, make them back to town. Yeah, they'll lose out on experience, but they'll get experience later. But, you know, they'll get a lot more drops, as you can see. So, another little bonus tip here is once the Rift Guardian actually dies, normally you can't port to a player in a GR, but once the Rift Guardian dies, then any player that you're leveling or whatever can port to you if you're standing on the roof guardian whatever might make it a little easier all right so this next trick this one is going to be like the save progress kind of trick when you're doing like bounties and stuff like that so just to kind of illustrate this i've got this character over here in cathedral four and then my other character is over in cemetery now this is a way like you know if you're in bounties and somebody pops a goblin or something happens you want to be able to you know after the you know Wednesdaydale or the goblin drop or whatever you're able to actually go back to the point you were in your bounty without having to go all the way back through stuff especially those bounties that require you to get to like level two and everything like that so let's say i need to get over to you know the other player but i want to save progress here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to port to town that's step one right when i get to town i am then going to click on this look at the weird textures going on right now that's crazy never seen that but uh i'm gonna go click on their uh banner and it's gonna port me to them so let's say we here you know kill all the people do all the stuff with the goblins now if i hit town portal again then it's gonna you know override the one that i made from uh from uh, cathedral four right so what you can do though is you can go back to the waypoint here and then just hit tristram and then your cathedral four will still be here so it's a little trick way to like kind of like get back to where you're going you know and save your progress and, and whatnot all right so this next one's pretty easy this one is just force moving Right, if you're in like a rift or whatever and you're trying to get away from mobs and you're clicking to move, you know, if you're clicking on, you know, mobs, it's gonna actually find one here. If you're clicking on mobs trying to get past through them, you're gonna like stop and you know attack them instead. But what you can do is you can set force move. So like here I'm force moving. I'm not clicking. I have it set to a keybind. And so it allows me to like, you know, roll over even mobs and just move past them, right? And I'll actually show you how to do this really quick because by default, this is left unbound. 
So here, first thing you want to do is you want to go to options, key bindings. You scroll all the way down here to force move. It's underneath gameplay, right? I had this set to mouse wheel down, mouse wheel up, and that allows me on my mouse to just, you kind of move the, the wheel back and forth, and it allows me to just kind of move. You know, some people set this to like space bar, they can just hold down space bar and kind of like, you know, just, you know, guide with their mouse. This helps you kind of in damage avoidance and stuff like that to get out of situations where you normally trying to click to move would actually end up just attacking and standing still and potentially dying. All right, so another quick tip, I don't have any of these items on me because I just don't keep them, but there are shoulders that are called homing pads. These allow you to be uninterrupted while using town portal. And some people actually do carry homing pads with them. So if they're in a situation where they need to port back to town and they can't die or they're in a hardcore and you, you can survive the, the seconds it takes for your town portal to go off, but you know you can't be interrupted, you can carry these homing pads and just sw quickly swap them, you know, equip them and then use it. I don't personally use this trick because I find that like it's very easy to kind of clear the area and then port and also some classes and stuff like that have ways to mitigate any sort of interruptions. So that's just kind of a little bonus if you have, you know, an issue where you're always trying to port back to town and people are hitting you and you're it's getting interrupted. Carry some homing pads with you, swap them, port, good to go. All right, so this next trick is called like a god port or whatever is used for like power leveling and, and everything like that. So the way it works is like whenever you zone in anywhere or if you hit a waypoint or anything, you have one minute of in round or ability. This gets interrupted whenever you move or attack or take any action. You'll notice this a lot if you run um, vaults with other people and like uh, party vaults. So like several people go into the vault and you're sitting there waiting. You don't want to kill anything. You don't want to pop any of the gold piles because you want people to you know, get the loot and everything. So you're, everybody's just kind of standing there at the beginning of the vault. And those goblins, no matter, they can be right on top of you and they won't attack you for one minute until, every, until somebody takes an action, right? So I'm gonna try to illustrate this the best I can. I took my first character and kind of went into his own and then uh, you know, kind of aggroed some guys. We're gonna see if, uh, if this will actually work. It's kind of hard to illustrate. Okay, so you see right here, my pet not attacking, these guys aren't attacking me, and this will go on for like uh, several minutes. This actually helps with like power leveling hardcore characters as well. I think I already said that, but um, you can have the person being power leveled follow you to zones and staying, you know, at this location here. Now, if I switch back to my main guy and then I port to this guy, if I start moving around, then they'll attack me, right? They'll attack and kill me. But they're not going to attack my other character that's sitting there because they're still under the 60 second invulnerability as it were right so that's just a very very neat trick to know if you're like trying to help people level and you know keeping them from dying because if they don't die they get more experience and whatnot all right so this next tip this is what i'm going to call like positioning right anything in diablo you're going to want to be like below the enemy on the screen right because like the way the camera is tilted you have more of a vantage point if you're shooting up or into the corners, right? So if you're sitting there trying to fight mobs that are like down here, like where your you know, skills are and everything, you're not gonna be able to get a, a, a decent enough range, especially if you're using things like uh, steady aim or anything that has like a distance, you know, uh, benefit right here. So as you can see, like I'm always, you'll see people do this too all the time. You're always trying to position guys at like this top, you know, portion of the screen right here and then anytime that you a mob that you're fighting gets down here you're always going to try to get on the opposite side of it and try to push it as far up into the screen as possible so just try that and you'll notice you'll be able to clear rifts a lot more efficiently if you just position everything in the top you know edge of the screen all right so this next tip is kind of like a uh you know group kind of like you know min max kind of a situation but it's kind of the idea is to just differentiate yourself in a group to easily or more efficiently run higher NGRs. So another way you could do this, if you want to like, say your support class, your ZDPS, right? You can have your ZDPS go in here and just dye everything like a really bright color, right? All their gears, one color, like just basically you're color coding the party, right? So that, you know, people support knows who the damage dealer is. The damage dealers know where the support is. And another, you can kind of take this a step further by having your supports or everybody in the party change colors of wings so you know you have wings of valor you can put on you have eternal light uh things like that just have everybody kind of wearing different wi wings and so everybody knows it just 
I don't know, kind of an organizational thing if you're running really high density GRs and you know everybody looks the same. Everybody's got this like vanilla UE with the same wings going on. It's gonna be hard to really tell who the support class is, who the damage is, all that good stuff. All right, so this next tip is just gonna be talking about cooldown reduction and resource cost reduction, right? And you know, the long and short of it, this is a very complicated, you know, formula and whatever, but it just it follows the rules of diminishing returns. Right, so as you can see here, my cooldown reduction is 28.32, and my gloves I have, um, well, actually, not my gloves, my Yangjury curve I have 9%. So if I take this off, you'll notice that I had less than nine, you know, be added when I put them back on. Because the way this works, and this goes for like pretty much any stat in Diablo, and this is helpful for, for new people who are not really, you might be trying to like stack a lot of GR, and you do the math, the rough math in your head, you're like, well, we've got nine here, eight here, 12 here, it should add up right to 100 but you'll never get these to 100 percent because of diminishing returns and to kind of summarize that the more you add to one stat the less the individual value of that stat is over time it's like a it's like a bell curve right you know initially you're going to get a lot and then as you start keep stacking it's going to go down and down and down you know you have the same thing with uh, dexterity and paragon right so when you start getting to like you know 2500 to 3000 paragon so most people will start rolling off uh dexterity or whatever their primary stat is on their gear and just start putting it all their dexterity in paragon because at a certain point this dexterity is not worth as much per point the higher you stack it Hope that clarifies. All right, so his next trick is gym management or like just kind of like how to like what gyms to keep, what ones not to keep. And this is gonna go across for seasonal, non-seasonal. Now, general rule of thumb, you only wanna keep these ranks of gyms, right? The Imperial Topaz, the Marquise, and the Flawless Royal. Flawless Royal is because you're gonna put the max level in any gear that you might have. But these are these two ranks right here, the Imperial and Marquise, those are gonna drop, right? You're gonna actually get those from drops. And also the Imperial is used for rolling jewelry, right? So one ring, you can't really see it because of my map or my screen. You see right here, to roll a uh, ring, this ring, it's Imperial Diamond, and then to roll another ring, it's you know Amethyst, and then to roll a uh emerald it's uh, imperial topaz right so you always want to keep those two ranks those are droppable ranks and if you do upgrade anything always upgrade to the highest right so i'll just go in here to this so if you're ever going to like combine gems you know and everything like that only come up to imperial if you create any flawless imperials or higher let's just go to the full list here so if you go any anything above Imperial, then you should only create things in um, like groups of nine or like groups of three, really divisible by three, because you know the only reason to upgrade past Imperial would be to actually get all the way up to Royal. So another trick here, as far as like converting gems and everything like that, you know, if you you want to like convert gems using the Royal Amethyst. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create nine right and you can do this you need thing that's divisible by three then it's fine so we're going to create you have to basically create three sets of this 27 of them i think right 27 and then we're going to create nine of these and this is when you're using the cube to convert gems you want to be able to you have, you have to do nine right just the way it works and I don't think we have, we'll have to go to act two here really quick. I'll just show you how to do that. All right, if you go to act two and just go to hidden camp, then you can go to squirt the peddler. And over here, you can like essence of emerald. I'm gonna just buy like four of them. And you go over here and you can go all the way to this one right here. So you have to have any gem nine. So we're gonna put ours in here. This is more cost effective to do royal amethyst. And then one of these, right? And it just gives you that. Then you can just go back with your nine right or nine emeralds here and you can automatically create three of the flawless royals right well i gotta do them all at once i didn't actually select it but you know with those nine you can create all three which is that's kind of a fast way to kind of get gems for an augment right if you gotta augment something because those are going to require the gems like that fast way to do it in my opinion so all right next up is going to be paragon point distribution now you know Let's say you roll a new character and you gotta put all this paragon in. You're not gonna sit there and just you know you know put them all in you know all at the same time. You know, just mass clicking. 
there's a few keystrokes that you can do to speed this up, right? If you hold down shift, right, then you'll put in 10 at a time, right? Shift will do 10 at a time. But then if you actually hold down control, it'll do 100 at a time. So it makes, you know, filling all of your Paragon up really, really, really quick, right? And this just helps too. And like most of the time, I don't even sit there and do all my Paragon. I'll run like maybe 10 GRs even at high end before I even put in Paragon points just because it's easier just to kind of put them all in at once. So just once more, hold down control. That'll give you 100 points per click. And then shift, that'll give you 10 per click. And then of course, just a click is a single point. All right, now this this one is kind of controversial. A lot of people will disagree with me on this one, and a lot of people will, you know, definitely, uh, you know, will definitely have experienced this for themselves because this will not change on your sheet, right? Because normally this has to do with gym of ease and experience sharing, right? So normally, you know, percentage based experience will share across the party. So things like uh, do I even have anything like labor work signet, right? This has a 21% experience. Anybody that's any, all the experience bonus gear in a percentage form being added usually gets compiled together and divided across the party. But what isn't really documented is the fact that the monster kills or like anything that says monster kills grant X amount of experience. These things are not going to be, um, they'll show up on your sheet as down here. If you go to the very bottom, it'll show experience per kill. It'll show you there, but then, you know, we're in the same party with level one right here. And let me just show you hers. Hers will say zero, right? And you also get 10% for every person beyond the first in the party. So if we had a four person group here, everybody would be get 30%, right? But just, you know, make a note, her bonus per kill is zero because she's not wearing any, any gear. And on my, you know, main guy right here, I'm wearing the Gym of Ease, which is level 82. So it's 4,600 experience per kill. Now, this is why most people will dispute this and they'll say that this is not shared, but I power level a lot of people in my day and it usually takes and we're talking about like you know we're on torment six usually if you do a full clear like a full full clear of a nephilim riff and they're doing let's say they're not even staying inside or even let's say in there i've had people even stay inside the um you know strength and numbers up and still only get to like level 60 or so and it takes like 10 15 minutes to get them all the way to 70. you got to you know full clear a nephilim rift and then you have to go in full clear or even half clear another one but i'm gonna kind of illustrate just a little bit in this how this does actually share so what i did was i just opened up a normal rift on torment six and my main character here is wearing the gym of ease and the main the other character that's in this game is gonna be level one and we're just gonna kind of watch you know my, by average you know you in the entirety of one nephilim rift full clear mind you you're gonna get to like level you get them like 55 and 60 you know now it depends on change if they're wearing like a ruby but my other character has no ruby on we're just gonna kind of see how things go we're gonna leave her at the door she's only gonna move when we go to a new floor and port to me right so there's gonna we're not gonna be like factoring in strength and numbers once we're out of range it's gonna drop so we're just gonna go in here we're just gonna see how it goes right and in my experience with using Gem of Ease on the power leveler, not the level E, you can level somebody, you know, within like five minutes, right? It's like half the time, really. Like, see, look, they're already at level 34, right? And I'm probably, what, 17%? I'm 17%. Now, obviously, like, the, the kill bonus on Gem of Ease is only 4,600. So the more they go up in level, the less they're going to get. It's also a diminishing return here. But as you can see here, I've barely just started this normal rift. Barely. And they're at the door. We don't even have strength in numbers right now. Right? And they're already at 41. And remember what I said is if you full clear an, an entire, you know, Torment 6 Nephilim rift, then they're going to be at like, you know, maybe 60, maybe 61, depending on density and whatnot, whatever. But like right now, I'm outside of strength in numbers. They're at the door and they're already at 46 and I am 37% into this rift itself. So if they were actually following you around and staying within strength of numbers, you could probably do this in less than three minutes. Get everybody, get, get them all the way to 70 in one, less than one rift, really. Because right now, we're, and we're not, we don't have pulls or reflections. I'm, I'm not gonna pick up any like empower shrines or anything like that. We're just gonna go straight off monster kills here just to, to illustrate how this works. Like they're at 50, we're at 49% of the, so they're getting about 1% of uh one level per one percent 
of the Nephilim Rift, and they're getting basically just the zone bonus. They're not even getting proximity bonus, right? Of course, this is uh, no open level two. That would have been illustrated a lot better. But I kind of like the idea that this is, you know, we're getting really far away from her. So we will kill the Rift Guardian. They'll probably, she'll probably be at like 60. We're probably going to have to go back down to the second level here. But normally you have to, you know, defeat. You know, you have to full clear the entire thing to get them even remotely close, right? See so if we can just find the door here. Go through a little bit. She's at 54 right now. We try to find the door here. So she's going to port. This is the only time she's ever going to port. Go ahead and port over. And she is at what? 54. Right? And we haven't even gotten the Rift Guardian up. We're at 83. Wait for her to port in. So she's right there. And then I'm just going to sit here. And we're going to clear up to the Rift Guardian. 56. It's around like 56 or so like that. That, you know, it really starts to slow down. Just because of it. But we're just gonna, like, she's 57 now. We're just gonna kill everything kind of in and around the area. It's really just the initial boost, you know, for the most part. If you ran without Jim of on the power leveler, then it's gonna take you a little longer to get, like, to 30s and to 40s, but it's almost instant, right? The, d the time it takes to get from, like, you know, 58 to 70 are probably gonna be close to the same as if you weren't using Jim of because of just the, you know, diminishing returns or the experience penalty that's been put on. But uh, we're not even trying to full clear this. We're just kind of like, you know, vaulting around and just doing whatever. And we're at 59. So we're going to go and port again. Keep in mind that you usually have to do a full clear. You have to hit the obelisk and then also do maybe like 25% of another Torment 6 to get them to 70. We're at 59 now and we're on only, we just started floor 3. And we're not trying to like, you know, stack, you know, gym, or, uh, strength the numbers either so if they're following you around doing this they would already be 70 right the 61 we're just gonna see where we're at we're gonna see if we can get there before we actually get to the obelisk 62 it'll be close most likely most likely <laughs> but this is definitely huge for like just helping people level up and even if you're like playing non-season and you throw GMVs into a weapon, throw a really boss weapon with like a level one. You can do that. I've done it before too. You know, gone. I've literally doubled enough GMVs to 25 to you know make all gear level one, right? You know, augment it. I probably still have some of those pieces running around. I don't know where they all went. There's the obelisk. So 63. 63 is pretty good, and it just goes to show that. Gym of Ease, it's plus monster kill, and you can stack more stuff than this, you know, to make this even better. So they had a ruby, right? Or if you're wearing the bracers that converts gold into experience, they'll also get a bonus from that. And that's how you really get it below, like, three minutes, is by just you stacking a bunch of, you the power level stacking a bunch of experience, and then just getting them there. You know, everybody knew about the, you know, Leoryx and all that stuff being shared, but, you know, no one really thought, you know, has, there's people that do it, but nobody really thinks about putting a gem of ease on the person actually power leveling the other. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you. Hope these tips, or yeah, I mean, hopefully you learned something, right? Hopefully these tips helped you out. If you want to add anything to this list, or if you know something that I didn't mention, mention in the comments, right? I already know that the Jim and V's thing is going to be controversial. Some people say no, some people say yes, but you know, I guarantee you, if you go and power level people with Jim and V's on, you will notice a difference. You definitely will. Do a do a big study on it, like you know. Uh, I, I believe, even though it hasn't really been officially documented that it's shared, I absolutely believe that it is shared. But anyway, if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you can see when I put up more stuff about Diablo 3. And like always, good luck and peace out.